Hi everyone, it's Jennifer from Fine Flu Fluency. We'll get my words out tonight. Uh, and we're on to mini lesson nine. And as requested by yourselves on the poll of the group, we are covering Las Prepositiones tonight. So we are just looking at two very basic prepositions. We're not going to go into great detail about every single preposition. That would be a long lesson. It's a mini lesson. So we are just going to look at, concentrate on, um, como decir, how to say, to the, from the, and of the in Spanish, because I think a lot of you don't understand it when you see it, and you're asking me to just go over uh, what it is, what it looks like, how you form it, and how you know the rules of when to use it. Okay, lo que necesitas, what you need, is un boli, un lapiz y papel, so pen and pencil, or pencil and paper. You might find it worthwhile just noting down some of the rules that I'm going to go over with you in the first few slides, so that when you come to do the exercises, you've got the information that you need to be able to do them accurately. Obviously, this is videoed, so um, alternatively, you can just pause the video, go back and forward as you like, okay? You've got that flexibility, which is really good. So I thought it might be worthwhile just having a little look at what a preposition is. What is a preposition? Because if you've not been le learning languages formally, um, you might not be that familiar with it, depending on how you learned English. Obviously, a lot of us on here, English is our native language. Um, but we'll all have been taught that in different ways at school, you know, the grammar of English. So some people may have been taught more formally than others. If you've been taught formal grammar, you'll know these termino the terminology like preposition, verb, pronoun. If you weren't, you won't know what it is. So keeping it very simple here, because when you actually Google the definition of a preposition, it gives you a very technical kind of um, definition. And I've just thought, we need to keep it in plain English so that we all know what we're talking about. So they're the small words that we use every day to connect words and sentences together, right? Examples are in, about, out of, and around. And we're going to look at some basic Spanish prepositions today, specifically how to say correctly that you're going to a place and how to say of and from as well. Now, before we even get to prepositions, you really have to know what a definite article is. Please don't fall asleep right now. I know that I'm using a lot of jargon just now. It should become clearer as we go on through the lesson. So you need to know the word for the in Spanish. And in Spanish, we have actually four different words for the. It's not like English where we just have one. So you've got masculine and feminine, and you have singular and plural versions of those. So I've given you the four examples of the words for the in this table. So we've got L for masculine and singular nouns. We've got la for feminine singular nouns. You've got los for masculine plural nouns and you have las for feminine plural nouns. I hope that didn't go too quickly for you. Obviously, you can come back to this yourself, okay? The focus of this lesson is not on the articles. We might well revisit this again later on, um, but you need to know them to understand what's coming next, hence me showing you them just now, right? So you have definite articles and indefinite. The definite articles are the words for the and the indefinite are the words for a and some, okay? It's the definite ones that we need the words for the for this lesson. So some examples of masculine and feminine and singular and plural nouns then, just so that we can see the articles and what they look like when they're used with the nouns. So example here, el supermercado, the supermarket. It's masculine, it's singular. It ends in O, as most masculine singular nouns do, but not all. So it's el supermercado. La plaza, the square. Ends in A. It's feminine singular. Most feminine singular nouns in Spanish end in a, not all. So it's la, feminine singular article. Los polideportivos, the sports centres. It ends in os, which kind of tells us it's masculine plural. Therefore, we use the masculine plural article, which is los. And then las tiendas ends in as, tells us that it's feminine plural. And we are using the feminine plural article, which is las. So, saying you're going to a place, the Spanish word for to is simply a. You'll have seen it used with named places or proper nouns. So, when I say a proper noun, I mean something like Edimburgo, Stirling, Glasgow, Barcelona, Madrid, España, Inglaterra. These are proper nouns or named places. So, voy a España de vacaciones. I'm going to Spain on holiday. Voy a Madrid este fin de semana. I'm going to Madrid this weekend. So far, so simple, no? Quite easy. 
<laughs> yes, don't be fooled. We're coming to the complicated bit. So, it does get a little bit more complicated when you want to use other kinds of nouns for places and time, etc. And you have to merge a with the definite article, like this. Boy al supermercado. So I think Ellen Jardin, shout out to you. I think it was you that was maybe asking me about this. You were asking about Al and Dell. So here you go. Hopefully this demystifies it for you and you understand why it's there. So boy al supermercado. I'm going to the supermarket or I go to the supermarket. So here what we've done is we've had to mer merge the word for to, a, with the word for the, right? So a plus L becomes Al here. And then vamos a las tiendas esta tarde. We don't merge as such, but we put the two together. Um, we are going, or we go, to the shops this evening. Okay, so a las, we just put those two together. And here are the little rules here for that. So a plus L is Al. A plus la is a la. A plus los is a los. And then a plus las is just a las. Okay, so más ejemplos, a few more examples here. Queremos ir al Castillo de Edimburgo. We want to go to Edinburgh Castle. Okay, so Castillo is masculine singular, el Castillo. We put a and el together and we get al. Los trabajadores van a las fábricas por la mañana. The workers go to the factories, plural, in the morning. So a las fábricas, it's plural, feminine plural. And then, las turistas van a los mercados en Andalucía. Tourists or the tourists go to the markets in Andalucía. So, market on its own, um, the market is a masculine singular noun, el mercado. But at the plural, it's los mercados. So, we say a los mer mercados here. And then, nos vemos a la estación de trenes. We'll see each other at the train station. I should really have my at the um, highlighted there as well. Okay, so la estación de trenes is a feminine singular noun. So we say a la estación de trenes. First exercise then, a little bit of practice for you. Inserting al, a la, a los or a las here. So I will talk you through these a little bit and I will help you with context. So that's the meaning of the sentence and what's going on around the sentence this time. However, what you really want to be doing, if I'm honest, is weaning yourself off my support and trying to become a little bit more independent and working things out for yourself. Okay, so I'll help you because I know that some people might be un poco perezoso, right? A little bit uh, lazy. But I think moving forward, we need to sort of start doing things for ourselves. And I'm going to leave you to it a little bit more. So first one, Jorge va something escuela hoy. So what our sentence means here, or what we're trying to say is, Jorge um, is going or goes to school today. Okay. So what we really need to concentrate on is this noun, Escuela, and whether it is masculine or feminine, singular or plural. So we can see from our ending it ends in an A, which tells us it's feminine, okay? There's no S, so that tells us really that it's singular, okay? So we want to say, we want basically two here. We want our A plus something, and we know that it's feminine singular. Our feminine singular article is LA, so our answer for the first one is going to be Jorge va a la escuela hoy. Okay. I want you to do number two to four to five, sorry, yourself. I am going to help you with the meaning, but I'm not going to give you the answer for the other ones. Okay. So vamos, we go, or we are going to the, and the gap. You need to work out which to the you're going to use. Cine, cinema, esta noche, tonight. Okay. Number three, boy, I'm going or I go. And then we want to the, again, you need to work out which to the you're going to use. Centro Comercial, mañana. Um, centro Comercial is shopping centre, mañana, tomorrow. Okay. Number four. Mis amigos van something, tiendas, juntos. So, mis amigos, my friends, van, are going, or they go. And then we want to the tiendas or shops. And again, you need to look at this word tienda or tiendas and work out, is it feminine, singular, plural, and so on, masculine. And then juntos together. So my friends are going to the shops together. 
And then number five, quiero ir something, gimnasio, todos los días. So quiero, I want to, ir, go. So I want to go um, to the gimnasio, gym, todos los días, every day, right? Again, focusing on gimnasio as a masculine, feminine, singular, plural. And then what to put in the gap there, bearing that in mind. Okay, if you're not ready for answers, it's a good opportunity just now to pause. If you need to go back to the other slides or if you want to finish your, your answers off, that's fine. But I'm going to go on now to the answers. Okay, so if you're not ready, pause the slide. Okay, so las soluciones. First one we already did. Jorge va a la escuela hoy. Number two, vamos al cine esta noche. Number three, voy al centro comercial mañana. So the nouns cine and centro comercial are both masculine singular nouns, so we use al here. Number four, mis amigos van a las tiendas juntos. My friends are going or go to the shops together. A las tiendas, feminine plural. And number five, quiero ir al gimnasio todos los días. I want to go to the gym every day. It's el gimnasio. It's masculine singular, so we use, we merge a and el to al. Okay, well done. Hopefully you've got them or some of them right anyway. And then we're just going to have a little look at from the and of the and how they work. So if we've done a and al and a la and a las, we're now going to have a little look at from and of the, from the and of the, and it works in quite a similar way. Now that might be enough information for you for one sitting. So feel free to stop now and just let that sink in. You can maybe do a little bit more work on your own on al, a la, a las and so on. Okay. Um, and then you can come back to this bit later on. Or if you're thinking, yeah, that was okay. I think I can power on through. Then by all means, power on through. Very similar rules. So this bit should be easier having done the first bit of the lesson. So the word for from or of in Spanish is de. And you've seen that already, okay? When it's been used with proper nouns or with name places and people, we've seen it, okay? We've seen it being used. So when we did the verb ser last week, if you did that lesson, soy de Francia, I'm from France. Emma es la hija de María. Emma is María's daughter or the daughter of María, literally, okay? Emma is the daughter of María. So that's where we've seen de already being used, okay? Sometimes you do have to pair de with the definite article and it looks a bit like this. So it's very similar to our al, a la, a la, a, a los, a las. However, we've got del, okay, de plus el is del. De la, eh, de plus la is de la. De plus los, de los. De plus las, de las, okay. Más ejemplos, so a few more examples of this. Es el coche de la chica. It's the girl's car or the car of the girl. Soy del sur de Inglaterra. I'm from the south of England. I thought that was quite an interesting one because we've got the del and the de being used at the same time there in the same sentence. So soy del, de plus el, sur de Inglaterra. I'm from the south of England. Es un amigo de los chicos. He is the boy's friend or a friend of the boys. Soy el abuelo de la niña. I am the little girl's granddad or the granddad of the little girl. So in Spanish, we will never see the apostrophe for possession, like it is Robert's car, Robert's with the apostrophe. Um, so, you, so for example, it's a very, sorry, I was just having a think there myself. It's a very classic beginner's mistake to write something like S. Robert's coche. Okay, and it doesn't work like that. It's el coche de Roberto or whatever. Okay, el coche de, um, I don't know, la chaqueta de uh, Jennifer, right? Jennifer's jacket. No, um, it's Jennifer's chaqueta. We don't see that. Okay, so that's where your de la and your del and your um, de los and so on is used for possession. Okay, we don't apostrophe for possession the way that we do in English. Okay, so, ejercicio dos, practicamos. Let's see if we can put that into practice a little bit. So, a very similar exercise to our al and our alos and stuff, but this time we're inserting de, de la, del, de los, de las. What do you think is the right option here? 
So again, will I help you a little bit with, um, I don't know if I should help you so much with the context. I think you could probably look these up. Um, I might help you a little bit with meaning here. So Estados Unidos, if you've been following the lessons, you should have. You should know what that is. I'm not going to tell you what that is. Soy, I am, you should know that as well. Mi marido, my husband. Um, so what is he is from the north of Spain here. Este libro es. Este means this. So this book is something. Okay. Uh, so I want to say this is the women's book basically there. Volvio, preterite tense you haven't seen before, or I haven't shown you, some of you might have seen it. Um, so Volvio means um, he or she returned or came back from. Okay, so they came back from the shops with something. You can maybe work out what they are. And then este pescado, so we've got that este, this, okay, this fish is, and then rio means river. So we want to say this fish is from the river, okay? Now, I think I'm going to go into answers. So if you haven't done these, obviously that was very quick. You might want to pause just for a little minute, give yourself some time to do the answers. Um, and you can unpause when you're ready to see the, the correct answers and correct your work. Okay, so moving on now to answers. Las soluciones. Soy de los Estados Unidos. So it's masculine plural. So it's de and los. Two, mi marido es del norte de España. Um, it's masculine singular, so it's el, de plus el is del. Este libro es de la mujer. Mujer is lady or woman. It's feminine singular. It doesn't end in a, but it's feminine, feminine singular. So este libro es de la mujer. Four, volvió de las tiendas con regalos. Again, we're looking at this noun here to try and get which one we use. It's feminine plural, so we use de las. And then five, este pescado es del rio. So el rio is masculine singular. We have to put de and el together, del rio. Okay, hopefully you've got most of them, if not all, correct. And well done. That's quite a hard slog, especially if you are not used to covering grammar. I was quite surprised, as I said, um, on the Facebook group, page that so many of you wanted to cover this when I gave you the options because it sort of directly contradicts the information from the survey that I gave out. So I had sort of surveyed just a sample of 30 or 40 people and asked what they felt like they most wanted to learn or what, they, what skills they wanted to brush up on the most. And grammar was really, really in a low percentage of what people wanted to, to learn. But then it just shows, I think, the fact that you've all, a lot of you have chosen this as the point that you wanted to cover. I think shows that you probably don't realise when you're using grammar or when you need it, but then you do realise, you notice it when you don't know what something means. And quite often it's the more technical aspects of language that cause you problems. And that's where really the grammar and being able to use the language flexibly comes in. Okay, so hoy hemos aprendido las preposiciones de and a. Right, right, that should say de y a. We should have our Spanish words. So the prepositions de and a. And then como y cuando usarlas. So uh, how and when to use them, I think, hopefully. And we've also seen mass vocabulario, as usual, because nearly every lesson we're coming across new words and we're seeing a uh, new language and we're using it, okay? Um, good. I hope that was helpful for some of you. And I hope it's answered some questions. If you have any questions on it at all, then obviously feel free to uh, drop me a line. Anybody that's not on the Facebook group, get yourself into the Facebook group, send me a little request, answer the two questions to get into the group. I'm happy to have you. If you're a genuine Spanish beginner and you want some free help. Okay, muchísimas gracias todos. Buenas noches.